Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we continue the GT3 build. It's gonna be a pretty big day because we're gonna start by pulling off those wheels and tires. I finally got the tool from Porsche, the center lock tool to do that. Now I would not recommend taking these off with an impact as you're supposed to use a pretty big breaker bar, but because we don't have really much suspension on these cars, the wheel's just gonna spin around. We're gonna have to use the impact to take them loose. Uh, however, I will show you how to properly remove and replace a center lock on a different video. So once we get those tires and wheels off, we're gonna go ahead and start disassembling that suspension, pulling off that rear subframe, getting rid of that steering rack, really getting that front end cleaned up and seeing what we got. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button below, turn on those notifications, because there's a lot of good content coming up. All right, I forgot to record a good opening for this, so you've got me on voiceover here. What we're doing here is we're gonna pull off all four wheels, and I know I said don't use an impact, but here we're gonna have to use an impact. Right, Scott. Calm down, because we're all right in this instance. The wheels are no good. We're gonna throw them out other than one, which you'll see in a second. So I just go ahead and pull them off real quick. We also don't really have any suspension to react against. So getting these off the breaker bar is gonna be really, really difficult. And the brakes have lost their fluid, so I can't even use the brake pedal. So I'm really just trying to get the wheels off so I can save those brake rotors, reuse them when we put the car back together. So in this case, you're gonna see me pull off that wheel, keep the hub, and just gently rest that brake caliper on the ground. That suspension's so torn apart that most of it, uh, including the hub, is being held up by the brake line, which I'm trying to avoid, which is why I've got that green elastic cord in there. So we're just kind of gonna go around the vehicle then, finish pulling off these wheels, checking out those brakes, making sure the rotors are in good condition, and then get moving on pulling off that suspension. So I'll let you get back to the action. So I pulled off the second wheel and the suspension is completely gone. So the brake is actually being held into the hub, but that whole thing is really being held on by the tie rod for the steering rack and then a brake line. So I actually dropped the car down a little bit so that this is resting on the ground gently. So you can see it's actually on the caliper now, not the rotor. Uh, this rotor still seems to be in pretty good shape. Looking for cracks again, I don't see any. Uh, that's really, really good news. Uh, the caliper has got some scratches on it because it looks like it actually bent in on the wheel. So these wheels were pretty beat. And you can see some scuffs here where the wheel actually hit the caliper during the accident. So needless to say, these wheels are not gonna be used again. They're pretty beat up. There's giant gouges and holes, which is unfortunate because these are pretty nice wheels. Yeah, here's where it must hit the curb. Something interesting I noticed here when we're taking a look at the brake, uh, the rotor's okay, calipers are good, and we look, spin this around, everything seems all right, but there's something missing. So you can actually still see some of the pad marks. We're missing the park brake. So there's supposed to be an electric park brake on this car, and I guess at some point somebody removed it, so we're gonna have to replace that one. But that's interesting, the first time I noticed that. I was wondering why it was so easy to move around, but now we know that uh, the EPB's not here. Okay, last rotor here. Again, we're missing the EPB. Don't know why, uh, but the rotor looks good. There's no cracks other than the normal surface cracking. In fact, if you took this off by itself, you wouldn't really be able to tell this car's been in an accident. And some good news, it looks like this guy might be okay. We might have one salvageable wheel. Uh, there's a little dirt on it, but I don't see any major bends or any real damage here. So we'll probably get this guy refinished, but that's great. That's one less wheel we gotta buy. All right, now that we got the wheels off, we can take a look at the front suspension here, which is pretty wrecked. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that next. So first thing is we're gonna take off the tie rod. So this is for the steering. And we're gonna pop this guy off and there's a ball joint under here, but we're not really gonna to be too worried about it. Usually you have to be pretty careful because there's a boot under here that you don't wanna tear. 
So you want to be real careful when removing these. But here we're just going to get this guy off so we can pull that knuckle out. The lower control arm, as you can see, is separated from the subframe, so don't need to worry about that. Uh, but we do still have the brake line connected. So this is currently connected to the caliper, which we want to keep. So there's a little clip under here. We're going to pull this guy out, drop the brake line down, disconnect that and plug it so we don't drain all the fluid out. And last but not least, we've got the front lower control arm here, which just so happened to have stayed intact and bolted onto the hub. Let's see if we can show that guy. So behind this cover, there's a bolt and we're gonna go ahead and undo that and that should do it. So we'll get that wrapped up. We're gonna pull this off right now. I'll show you how to do that and then we'll move to the other side and then we're gonna get this subframe removed. All right, guys, and with that, the front left hub is off. So it was a bit of a pain, but as you can see, some of the arms are actually just pulled clean out of the body. So we didn't really have to undo them. Undid the upper control arms, took off the brake lines, took off the brake sensors, the wheel speed sensors, undid the top strut, pulled it off. So now let's get this thing up in the air. Let's see what we have to do to get this front subframe off, though from the looks of it, it's mostly done. I think the accident took off the majority of it so you can see the steering rack and what remains. So I'm gonna just lift it up a little bit, see what we got, undo it, and then hopefully this thing will come out and we'll be able to really see what's going on in the front end. Yeah, there's a large ass connector. Alright guys, finished pulling off the front. We removed what was left of the steering rack and the front subframe. And overall, let's take a look down here. This whole thing took the brunt of the impact. So you can just see it's completely destroyed. We're gonna keep it just in case there's anything interesting, connectors or any cables or anything, but uh, it's, it's completely toast. You can see where something actually hit the steering rack. So this is the electric power steering system. It even sheared off the steering column when it got hit. So pretty bad shape, sway bar is also pretty bent. I'm not surprised about that and the kind of the state of the front. But let's take a look at the car now that she's up in the air. This is what's left of the front. We're gonna remove this before it cuts somebody up. See some nice uh, wiring harness here that looks like it has already been, let's see if I get that in focus, it's already been repaired. So there's some tape and other kind of crap that usually you wouldn't see on a factory harness. So 
we're gonna get that replaced and removed. So next I'm gonna pull off some of these coolant hoses here and pull off this guy, which has been very much flattened and get rid of this fuel tank. So we'll drop this guy down, see what's underneath, but really starting to look at this, the front's not bad. So what I'm really looking for here is although the wheels went back into the uh, rockers, Overall, it looks pretty straight. So I want to make sure the passenger cell's okay because you can actually remove the entire front piece of this car and put on a new one. In fact, you can see some of the rivets underneath here, underneath here, and we just have some seam seal around that we'll have to take off and we'll show you the rest of them. So the plan is to drop this fuel tank out, take off what's left of the rear the front subframe supports, and take a look around, but really, we probably could have fixed this, but you can see here, right where the front subframe bolts in, it's completely just smushed. It's got all, it's cracked, broken, so we're not really gonna be able to fix this. Some might say, oh, you can weld this up, but not a good idea. When you've got a structural piece like this for the suspension and the subframe, you wanna just go ahead and replace it. So we're gonna strip this entire front down and put on a new one, so. One thing I noticed when we were working on the front end here is we've taken a lot of weight out of the front, which means the front end is quite light. And since it's a 911, most of the weight's in the rear. So you can actually see, likes to kind of rock a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna remove this lower link and move it back. So if you take a look underneath, we're gonna take the lift, which was underneath the body mounts, and I'm gonna put it back here, or at least try to, underneath the rear subframe where the lower link mounts. This should shift the lifting point way in the back under the engine, and we should be good because we're gonna be removing a lot more weight from the front as we pull off the fuel tank and then eventually the front end. So we're gonna go ahead and move that now and then lift it up. All right, guys, after a lot of screwing around, we finally got the GT3 settled back on the lift. So we ended up not being able to use the rear subframe because the lift arms weren't quite long enough. Instead, we actually used the locating pins in the uh, body in white, sorry, not pins, features in the body in white, so you can see them here. So this is actually where, when they build the Porsches, there's a hole here they slot a pin into, and that's how they move the body in white around and locate it for uh, welding and bonding and everything else. So this is where we're now lifting. We wanted to get back here, but we just couldn't get the lift arms to work out. Uh, and you can see though, we're about two feet further back now on the body. So we've, we're pretty much right where the engine is and that's providing a lot more stability. So we'll be able to go ahead and finish getting this thing taken apart. So that's gonna be a wrap for today. We finished the front end, we removed that suspension, we got rid of that steering gear, lower subframe, cleaned everything up, took a look, found some damage there where the subframe bolted, just reinforcing the fact that we're gonna to have to put a new front end on this thing. So up next, I'm gonna start taking off all of the parts on top, stripping it down and getting it ready so that we can actually remove the structure from the front of the car. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, turn on those notifications and follow the action. We'll catch you next time.